Welcome to Moments with Mary Ann. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest, Anne Jersh, and she's here today to share with us her new book, Future Vision, Your Working Life, 10 Strategies to Help You Get Ahead. Now, Anne is an international trainer and speaker, but she's best known as an intuitive, leading world pioneer of future life progression, otherwise known as FLP. This technique uses a blend of clinical hypnosis and visualization to guide clients into their own future to discover their best options regarding life choices. Anne's FLP training is now in 20 countries, and she is regularly consulted by business leaders, Hollywood directors, and of course, politicians for advice. So let's welcome to the show, Anne Jersh. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, delightful to be here. Well, how exciting it is that we get to talk to you from across the pond, right? (laughs) (laughs) And have this discussion. And it seems that you are crossing many ponds in the spiritual realm as well, you know? Um, Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, uh, up until um, recent times, a few months back, I'm jumping on planes and meeting people. And as you say, I'm traveling around in time, which is pretty exciting. Well, when I heard about that and heard about your book, my goodness, I had to have you on the show so we could talk about this. Because I think a lot of times people um, hear about, you know, past life regression and, you know, that kind of information. But where you're going is like uncharted territory, right? It kind of is, yeah. Um, The remote viewers, I'm sure you've heard of the remote viewers because um, America with with the, the leading light with remote viewing. Um, and the remote viewers would send their mind to different places and they found that they could go into the past and they could go into the future. Uh, so it had been done before. And, you know, I take people who say ahead in their current lifetime or into a future lifetime. But, you know, in Hinduism, they, they talk about the cycle of life and they, they think of past lives and future life. So it's kind of floating out there. But what I've done is I've kind of packaged it in a way. I've put it together in a way where I have a process where I can help you to look at the future, find your best options, because you know what it's like today. We have so many, so many options. We have so many choices and uh, often that freezes us or we dabble in too many things. So I help people absolutely maximize uh, and find the best possible future for them. Now, I know that you've written many other books and you're hugely popular when it comes to this realm, not just in the UK, but also here in the US. What inspired you to write this book? That, that's really interesting. See, see, you're intuitive because this, I was really drawn to write this book and I, all my books have been more spiritual, but I wanted to write more of a business book that for people that are maybe self-employed or work for a company but also need the spiritual element but not in the woo-woo way I wanted it to be very much based on science what really inspired me was I was seeing the world of work dramatically changing and that rate of change was getting faster and faster and faster and people were not coping people were saying to me I've always done it this way it's always worked it no longer does so the world of work was constantly changing and people were overwhelmed, constantly overwhelmed with information, trying to keep on top of everything and not coping. So I thought we need different strategies as we walk into the future than we, we've had in the past. Um, you know, Tony Robbins has often said, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. It, that's actually changed. If you keep doing what you're doing, you, you, you're going to come unstuck because the world's changing. And so what you've always done, you're not going to get the same results. So you're going to struggle. So we need a whole new bunch of strategies as we walk into the future. And I, I spent three, I usually I spend six months on the book. I spent three years just talking to people, just looking into this, noticing what's happening, what works, what doesn't. And I spent two years writing. So five, this is a five-year project it's a huge project Uh, a couple of times I thought what have I taken on (laughs) but it was a huge project but I just had this real 
real feeling I needed to I needed to get this information out there. Well, I think especially now, it feels like we're in this position where people are feeling maybe like they've lost hope when it comes to their job. Yeah. And I felt that, you know, your your book and the direction you help people with really helps them to see a clearer path. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the aim. That is the aim. Um, but what, when I'm talking to people that they're with the overwhelm and obviously now that we've had this virus a lot of jobs are going to go and not be there in the future so people have to reinvent themselves so I wanted to what I did was I came up with 10 strategies that that really make a difference um and we've been in the age of information we're in the information age up until recent times it's all about logic book learning and we've needed that our ancestors were more intuitive you know using their gut feelings especially if you go way back when they were primitive that they would have had to have used their instincts in order to survive because they were in survival mode so we came into that mode we were initially in survival mode which is quite primal then we came into the mind mode uh where, where it's all about logic now we need to use a combination of both i really i really feel we need left brain right brain um I'm constantly talking to people, they subscribe to everything, they're trying to stay on top of information, they're trying to learn everything, they're trying to be in touch with everyone. And what, what we have to do is actually slim down and absolutely be brilliant at our one thing, really slow everything down, calm it down and work intuitively. Uh, some of the best research has shown that uh, the best way to work intuitively is to have some knowledge, have some knowledge of your subject, maybe have a quick read of something and then use your gut feeling. Don't wade through reams and reams of data because you'll get lost, you'll get bogged down and you won't be able to process it. But having a quick scan and then tapping in, go, what jumped out at me there? That's what, that's when you start to get smart. So I've got two chapters about intuition because I think intuition is really, really needed in the future. And um, When I talk to people that are very, very successful, they all always without fail talk about their intuition I just knew to do that uh, uh, my instincts told me not to sign the paperwork so people it, there's actually been studies that prove that people at the top use their intuition more uh, people lower down are still wading through the reams of information trying to make a decision so that that's two of the strategies just um, using your intuition far far more we need that for the future Do you ever get people that say, you know what, I don't think I'm intuitive. So, you know, how am I going to use the information in this book? Yeah, that's an interesting one, especially in the corporate world. When I go into companies, you will get somebody and you can spot them because they've got their arms folded and their legs folded and they're they're kind of rolling their eyes a little bit. But, you know, usually when I start talking to them and say, one that most people have, if you ever had that thing, you're looking, you're looking at places to live, you're looking at apartments or houses, and you know which one's yours. You know it before you've even walked up the park, and they always say, yeah, yeah. Have you ever had that thing where you've met somebody, they're perfectly pleasant, but you've got this uneasy feeling, there's something in you. And they, they are intuitive. They're just, they see it as some big, what I've often said to people about intuition we expect to have this big dramatic, oh, I've had this vibe not to go there. It is it usually, for me, my intuition is usually a hesitation. When I keep hesitating over something, it's where it's saying, come on, stop that, don't go forward. It, it, it's, there's always a message when I hesitate. And some of the world's greatest, one of the top finances in the world said, when I'm about to sign paperwork, if there's something wrong, I'll get a pain in my shoulder. I mean, that is that, you know, this is one of the most logical money figure orientated people in the world. Uh, but if it gets pain in his shoulder and he says, always a warning, I stop until I find what, what the warning's to do with and never sign the paperwork. So we all have that within us, don't we? It's, it's, so even though people might say, say they're skeptical, They've always had something driving along the freeway and they slowed down. They started to slow down just as somebody pulled out on them. Uh, We've all had it. It's very rare you find somebody, once you start asking them, who hasn't got a story. 
Well, it's funny if you language it a little bit differently, like you're saying, you know, it's, you get that gut feeling or mm. just this nudge where you just get this knowing, then people are like, yeah. oh, I can relate to this, you know, it that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, they do. And and uh, usually people that kind of say they don't believe, once I've explained to them, people at the top use their intuition, they're more open to admitting that they do. <laughs> that it's just, it's often it's not in the form they expect. As I say, people expect some like like a big flash of lightning or something, and it's not. It's, it's subtle, and that's the difference. What I do, one of the things I teach people in the book is how your intuition works for you personally, because yours will work different from mine. So actually, if, if you're familiar with NLP, I broke down the submodalities of intuition, and that's just basically when you've had a bad feeling, is it an image? Is it? feeling is it thought in your head what what actually happened and we break down whatever it is if it's an image what what does it look like is it hazy is it bright then we find um a time when you just knew you knew to go forward you knew this good what was that process because your body you, you've actually got the process within you already it, it's primitive part of us it's already there once you know it the second you get a slither the good feeling or the bad feeling it's telling you something you're in a strong position that's how you start to really use your intuition so I also want to touch on and thank you for getting into detail about that but I'd always also like to touch on what future life progression is because we kind of we've talked about it a little bit but I'd love for you to share with us your experiences and how that's all come together oh well, th- well this was a um life-changing for me I mean I, I, I work with cards I've always worked tarot cards I absolutely love them like, since I was a teenager and I worked with past life aggression and I um I had a couple of young soldiers come to see me they wanted to go into their past lives and, I, and every week they would turn up and oh show us another past life we know we've had loads and they're great fun to work with and I taught them aggression and they wanted to find out something from the past so I brought somebody else in and said let's all three of us go back to the past and try it. But we didn't find out a thing. We didn't go back. We spontaneously, all three of us jumped forward. It was the strangest experience in my life. And, you know, Marianne, when you work in this field, you have, you have a lot of strange experiences. <laughs> but this, this was, this was like the most mind-blowing of, of my entire life. And what happened was we jumped forward three weeks and saw the attack on the Twin Towers. Um, and, and we didn't know what we'd seen. We just, we thought we'd got it wrong. We just said, oh, I don't know what I've seen. And we all described different, I saw Middle Eastern oil. Uh, one of the lads saw two skyscrapers with smoke pouring out of them. So this is America. I can see CNN there. And, you know, the other guy said, I'm looking out over a bay. It's America. And he's all I know is the skyline has changed. He said, how can a skyline change? It doesn't make sense. So it was, it was really, um, at the time, we just thought, oh, well, we, we're not on form. We didn't have a good session. Of course, three weeks later when it happened, we were so stunned. We, we didn't know how to even process the information because we didn't know enough to stop it. We didn't change anything. So what was the point? And after a little while, we started to see if we could do it again, do it at will. We started to, and I started using the processes I used for past life aggression, only taking the lads forward, and we started to predict world events. Not things that, not obvious, you know, certain things you guess, but this wasn't, this wasn't the obvious. We kept, we consistently predicted the future. It wasn't the odd fluke. And then I started to experiment with my clients, and they're great. They trust me more than they should sometimes. And I started to take them into the future, five years. And they'd say, oh, I'm living somewhere different, or I'm in this new job, or whatever. And I met a new partner. They were coming back to me. And this is what really got me. They were coming back a few months later saying it started to happen. I found that new job. I met that person. Um, I, I'm not a particularly patient person. I should be working in the spiritual field, but I'm not. But I, I, that got me because I thought we don't have to wait a long time. We can go straight to what we want. And what we were doing was getting the future and bringing it into our current consciousness so we're starting to make it happen much quicker and I feel particularly for business and career that is really good it's 
often, I always filmed my own life. It took me a long time to get to where I wanted to be. And uh, it's so lovely to be able to fast track people. Go, no, don't waste time on that. No, you don't need that. This is what you need to do. That is all. We communicate with our future self and we, we ask our future self, give me some advice. What do I need to know? And the sessions are just life changing. I mean, my life changed overnight. It just changed so quickly. Everything I saw started to happen. I've got a three book deal. I was completely unknown. I mean, thought of getting a three book deal was ludicrous, but I got it within weeks. Everything started to open up. And I've done that with my clients. It's been very, very, very exciting. So for the new book, I've, I've kind of been using these techniques to take people into the future because they need to know how their industry is going to change. What's the best option for them? That is just absolutely fascinating. And I can understand seeing an event like 9-11 and going, gosh, okay, that seems really, really um, something that'd be difficult to really kind of comprehend because of yeah. just the full totality of it, the tragedy of it all. And nothing and, like it had happened before. You know, you, you had no precedence to say nothing like it happened before. So we just couldn't process it at the time. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, people today are still having a, a tough time processing yeah, everything yeah. that happened with that. And so when you're taking people into the future, you said that it was like a few weeks, yeah. uh, you've seen five years. Now, have they gotten to the point where maybe that's kind of sped up because they, once they have seen it in mm. the spiritual realm, they're able then to kind of manifest it more into being? Yeah, yeah, you, you've you've absolutely nailed it. Yeah, but I think what we do is we try and manifest, but we try and manifest with our current limitations. And people will tell you they manifest, but you don't, you know, people are very good at saying, oh, I needed red shoes, and then somebody get turned up and gave me a pair of red shoes. They do manifest. I've seen people do it, but not many people uh, manifest the castle or the five million. So we can, we tend to be able to manifest the smaller amounts, uh, but not anything, uh, Huge. What? And I think it's because we're we're trying to manifest with our current limitations. And so what we do with FLP is we go beyond our current limitations. So, so imagine saying you're really comfortable with doing now that you weren't say ten years ago. You'd struggled. You'd have been a bit nervous. If you could travel back and give that energy to your past self and go, this is what it feels like to be good at this. You'd rock it. You'd do it much sooner. So we're kind of jumping beyond the blocks now, going straight to where we have the absolute best future and really feeling it. You have to be able to experience it. So we get the the people we're working with to really experience the whole thing. And that's when it changes. That's when they we bring it back to the current time. And I teach them how to bring up that energy every day. And that's when great things start to happen. Oh my goodness. I love that. Have you ever gotten a point where someone has seen a future where they're like, mm, I'm not buying that. And I don't want that, that they're able to kind of like change what happens. Yeah. Well, well when we look at multiple futures, so, you know, often we'll take, but my favorite is to take people forward five years, see what they're doing on their current path, with their current mindset, progressing, as, uh, progressing, where are they? And usually, you know, they've moved on a certain amount. Some are saying, oh, I haven't done as well as I thought. Some are saying, oh, yeah, things have panned out quite well. And I get them to find out, is there anything we should have done differently? And then I I, uh, take them forward to their best future. This is them living up to their full potential, making all the right moves. And I put them, and the chain, they actually, you can see them move. They start to sit differently in the chair. Something about them energetically changes and you can see it. And they walk out different. It's really attaching them to that powerful. And so, yeah, we just look at different futures. We, 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 We do it all the time. Just take people to find, okay, what would happen if you didn't do that? Okay, what's different about that future you that's got it right? And we really get what we need in order to make it happen. In your book, you talk about using your brains, plural. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I'd love for you to share that with our listeners. Oh, do you know, that is, uh, there's 10 strategies in that book. And that is the one that I got stuck on more because I couldn't let it go. It's so fascinating. Um, 
you have your brain and you know what the components of a brain, whatever you see as the components of the brain, neural pathways, the ability to remember. It's a whole bunch of stuff that, that makes up the components of the brain. You've got exactly the same in your heart and in your gut. Absolutely the same. Um, and often we, we, people in the spiritual field tend to be very heart-based, which is terribly, terribly nice, but not always useful to them. Because when you're heart-based, you're kind to everybody, but you're not business-like. Um, you're not business-like and people can take advantage of you. And I've had many conversations with therapists. They just go, oh, then people, they never pay me. And, you know, they stay for three hours. And, you know, so heart-based is not business-like. So, but heart-based is when you're doing what you love. So what, what one of the processes I do, I, I get people to use all three brains. Um, in the book, I, I, I liken it to having three friends. So you've got one friend who... Head base, he's very logical. He can process information. He can make a great plan for you. You've got another friend who really got your best interest at heart. This is your heartfelt friend. Well, make sure you love what you're doing. And then you've got your gut friend who will really kick you up the butt, make you go and do things, and will protect you. And so what I always say is, why would you only talk to one friend when you've got three amazing friends? So what we need to do is run things past all three. So say if you're thinking of doing something new, and anybody listening can do this, bring it into your heart. Just bring it into your heart and how does it feel? And, that, and if, if your heart's not enjoying it, forget it. Let's just stop it right there. But if your heart's going, oh, I'd love that, then bring it into your head and go, right, what do I need to do? What is the plan here? What do I need to do? How do I structure this? And then you bring it down into your gut and go, right, let's get going. Let's take action. When you start using all three brains, it, it, it gives you an incredible balance. The other thing is we're often using the wrong brain. We're often using the, the wrong brain at the wrong time. And um, it's, it's a fascinate, it absolutely fascinates me. I've got more and more into this because you're talking to people and you can see which brain they're using. And you can really see they're using the wrong brain. You just go, hang on. Can I just get you to bring that into your heart and feel it a bit more? <laughs> it, it's absolutely brilliant stuff, the three brains. And we, there's a suspicion that there's even more brains in the body. We just haven't found them yet. I wouldn't be surprised. And if anyone's going to find them, I'm sure it's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of really good guys uh, who, who work with multiple braining and, and they're worth a look. I, I've got to take my hat off to them. I, I did a lot of research. And then I can, and, and practice and try and use my intuition. Then I came across these guys, and they've done a huge amount of work. So there's a book called Embraining where where they've already done it. I, I just think it's fair to mention them. I have mentioned them in the book, but um, but I will be looking for more brains. I definitely will be because I know I, I've got strong suspicion the liver and that controls that anger and. I, I've got a feeling there's a whole bunch of stuff goes on there. So I, w- I will be looking in, looking into their brains further for sure. Because it, it blew me away when I started looking into it. Well, I'm sure. I mean, I found it so fascinating the way you broke it all down. And what I love about your book is that you give case studies in there. Mm. So you're really kind of giving these stories on how it applies. And I think that really makes sense for a lot of people. Yeah, the thing is, I work with people all the time in real life stories of what it's um, what it's all about. Because when you read a story, you can go, "Oh, I do that. Oh, yeah, I've had that situation." So we we relate to it more. But um, I love the stories because the case studies because you know what it's like working with people. They have incredible things happen. Most people, if you sit down and talk to them and ask them about their life and tell you something, we go wow really and so to get into the stories when people come to me for a session it's great I find the story and then I ask them permission to put it in the book and and it's lovely to see somebody having a problem and how they've turned it around what they what they actually did what process they used because we, if you've got the same issue then you can kind of say oh okay I can do that and you can use the same because I put all the um methods I lay out all the methods in the book so so yeah read the case study and use the relevant uh, uh technique and, and create some amazing change 
There's so much going on here, I know, in the States and all over the world where people, and we talked about this initially, where people are having upheavals in their jobs. Yeah. Are you getting a lot of people that are connecting you uh, with you right now to really kind of understand maybe what their next life, you know, the second part of their life life purpose would be? Yeah, that this is this is one of the reasons. It's interesting because I spent five years on this book, and that is exactly what the book's for. You know that your work is going to change. The book starts off. I don't care if you're hairdresser, CEO, work in IT. Your work's going to change. It just will. I don't care what you do. Therapist is going to change. That and the book actually come out the first week of the lockdown, and it's it's like the timing couldn't have been more specific. But yeah, people are. In, but one of the things I've noticed is people are quite angry about a lot of things. They're very uptight and angry. And that's been interesting to watch. People are kind of really divisive. You know, you're either in this camp or that camp. You either believe this or you believe that. And it's kind of, when you go further into the future, people are a bit more even. It's just people. But at the moment, it's bringing up. I, I tell you what it's like. It's like um, if you ever work with anybody with addictions, when people go into rehab, there's an expression they say when you stop taking the drink or drugs or whatever it is the good news is your feelings come back the bad news is your feelings come back and I put a piece in the book about how we're addicted to a uh, pace of life we're addicted to being busy and and that's just referring to I've got no name now but a wonderful scientist who just said we are addicted to the pace of life we've all been forced to just stop 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 of course we're acting like addicts in rehab. All the anger and issues, melt, the amount of people in England have had meltdowns, and you know, we're quite reserved usually. Not at the moment, it's really bringing up the issues. But, you know, if, if anybody's feeling like that, you push through it, you push through it, go through it, let the feelings come up. When you come out the other side, you have clarity. It's very interesting. I've been observing this. You have clarity. Of course, the year is 2020 clear vision so this is a very very interesting time it's uncomfortable but you come out the other side and the amount of people phone me up and say oh and I'm just so unhappy oh it's all going wrong a few weeks later they phone up and go I know what I need to do and they have this strong voice with it it's fascinating to watch and see how people are reacting so yeah if you're feeling not so good push through it allow the emotions to come up there's clarity at the end of it you'll get that click in your head you get that aha moment and you'll you'll really know your next step forward you know it's interesting I've had several people reach out to me recently and tell me that they are actually feeling anxious or depressed or just uh, you talk about angry because they're tapping into like the general consciousness are you getting a lot of that too yeah 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 and I'm trying to get people to almost step out that makes sense so step out the emotions step out their beliefs because people are getting very rigid with their beliefs you know you you either support this person or you dislike them you either believe this or you think that's terribly wrong and I'm seeing it all over the world we've definitely got it in England. use Brexit you know us leaving Europe um this has been going on for a couple of years so people are either really really thinking the best thing ever let's get out of Europe or they think you're really stupid and are angry if you want to get out there's nothing in between nobody's going to listen to anybody else everybody's just really really angry and the reason reason why people are so rigid is because today they can find people so they have a bit of a belief and they'll think oh right it's really good for us to come out of Europe very very good and they find other people and they join a few groups online and they watch the YouTube channel. So people build their case in a way. So when somebody comes along and says, oh, no, I don't believe that, they, they kind of go quite crazy at them. And how can you possibly not see what I see? So what I'm trying to get people to do is just step out of it. Just Stuart Wilde was a great one. He, he used to say, have respect for the don't knows. They are nearer the truth. And so I was just saying, how about if we just let go of all this? You know, let go. I'm not saying to you don't believe anything, but let go of trying to persuade people or thinking other people are wrong. Just flow with it and let it um, open up. Uh, and people are not too keen to do that. They're still in the anger phase and they're right. And everybody else is wrong, so they're quite rigid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think this time it's interesting because with all of this, 
you know, we, you know, we've got the pandemic where people are forced to stay at home. There are a lot of different voices that are rising um, due to um, Black Lives Matter movement that's going yeah. on. And yeah. so there's a lot of awareness. And at the same time, you know, it seems like just people are kind of a little um, like uncertain in many ways, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that that's Black Lives Matter is huge in England as well. It's really ended up a huge, huge movement here. Um, and it's a very angry, angry movement. And we haven't got, we've, our history is not that bad, actually. <laughs> Yet people, you know, if you're not black, people are quite angry at you. And, and, and our history is pretty good. But, you know, I mean, the, the Brits, um, we've done bad things everywhere. So I've put my hand up. We have done, if, everywhere you go in the world, somebody will point to you and go, oh, you're English. You had people here 400 years ago and you did this bad thing. And I'm going to apologise everywhere I go in the world these days. But, you know, we also played a huge part in ending slavery, but people don't want to hear that. They're so caught up in the emotional stuff. We've also given a lot of people huge opportunity, but nobody wants to hear it. Everyone's just so caught up in the emotion at the moment. you just got to let them go through that and just, just come back to, why don't we all just get on? Why don't we all just, you know, say it happened 500 years ago, not a lot we can do about it now, and that ain't my fault, but why don't we just get on? And you see people, it's almost like the realisation comes over them. And look, you know, none of us are bad people. Why don't we all just get on? And it's interesting to see people almost melt when we say those words. So it's not buying into the anger. Well, you talked about having 2020 vision, which I found fascinating because, you know, during this time also, I mean, we're really encouraged to go inward and mm. have that inward journey where we're looking at some of the things that we do need to change within ourselves, the angers, the upsets that we need to address yeah. that just deal, that just reside within us. I think, I think a lot of it is, um, simplifying. I think we just need to simplify our lives. We've just got too much going on all the time. I mean, you just look out in nature, the nature's coming back. I mean, we've got villages here where all some deer are roaming up the high street. It's quite wonderful. Um, I think it's all about letting go and just stopping and feeling. And it, it's it's actually really nice. I think it's all for us to simplify. People, I don't know about where you are, but in England, people are not rushing back out even when they can. You'll always get the picture of a load of people on a beach. But that, when you look at the numbers, it's not that many considering the population. So I, I think people are actually less inclined to do all the rushing around they did before. I'm finding people are now with that vision just saying, do you know what? No, I don't want to. They opened up um, my local high street and I had to go in and pay a bill. So I walked past the main shop where people buy their clothes and there was one person in there. Now, people haven't been able to go clothes shopping for three months. That shop is normally packed. They haven't rushed off. They haven't rushed off to go there. So I, I actually think people are changing. They're going, yeah, I, I don't want to go back to all that. And I think that's great. We don't want to go back to it. We want to do things a bit differently now. Yeah, I think, you know, spiritually and the planet itself is begging for us to mm-hmm. uncover the things that make us uncomfortable and don't serve us anymore and mm-hmm. to do things differently, you know. And I, I really yeah. felt that your work – Future Life Progression helps people to kind of find their true north. Yeah, well, the thing is, once they, once they find themselves in the future, living their most fulfilled life, then, then once they can feel it, they're not going to go back to their old way. They're going to go, oh, okay, this is me at my best. This is me doing great work with great relationships in my life. I feel healthy. They're not going to go back to their old way. So, we help them find that wonderful future and really settle into it. And that, that's really so fulfilling to see. So, yeah, we do. We, we kind of tap into that future for them and, and guide them to it. It's, it's really fulfilling for us to, to do. So, Anne, do you offer um, appointments or sessions that people anywhere in the world can connect with you and spend time with you? 
Yes, I do. I do uh, Zoom sessions, and uh, I love doing Zoom sessions. They're so they're lovely. I've got a lot of people from America. It's usually about four o'clock in the afternoon my time. People are getting up. And I, I do a lot, lot of America, a lot with the Middle East um, as well. Um, I also, I also do a monthly newsletter, and I always put a good exercise in there, something I feel useful for the time we're in. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much keeping in in touch with people. I'm on Facebook, so. Yeah, private sessions. I, I, I'm putting together downloadable courses. People can explore their intuition further. So what's that website they can reach you at? Yeah, it's um, anjirsch.com. It says A-N-N-E, then J-I-R-S, S S for sugar, C-H.com, anjirsch.com. Uh yeah, find, find me. And I'd love you to get the book. And it's not just me pushing set sales. I, I really feel I put my heart and soul for five years into this because I really, really believe it's the strategies we need for the future. We are. I knew we were coming in for a lot of change. It just happens to be the virus. There's other things that are going to create change. There's a lot of things that are going to create change. And we need to be the confident ones leading the way, guiding other people, being strong. That That's what I feel. If we... If we can walk forward firmly, confidently, and help a few people along the way to walk into their confident future, then then to me, life's good. Well, Anne, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Pleasure. Real pleasure. Lovely show. Well, thank you, Anne. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you. And of course, to talk about your new book, Future Vision, Your Working Life. Future Vision, Your Working Life is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And if you don't see it on the shelf, ask for them to order it. And of course, it's available on Kindle. If you'd like to connect with Anne, you may at her website, annjersch.com, for more information. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Mary Anne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.